What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. So before this video starts, I've actually got an announcement regarding the future of this channel. So those of you who know me know that I do operate quite a lot of channels on YouTube. We actually post over 100 videos a month on Gaming Curios and generally I kind of just have a lot on my plate. And so as a result, I haven't really been able to keep up with OSRS Curios as much as I would have liked to. So I decided actually that it would be best if I stepped down from being a commentator for these videos. This will actually allow us to make a lot more videos on this channel and not have these random breaks of just multiple weeks without posting any videos. And also I think given some time we can not only make a lot more videos, but the videos that we do make will end up being a lot better. So with that said, I'd like to introduce our new host for this channel for the future and that is Omar, who will be commentating the videos from now on. I'll still be working on this channel a ton behind the scenes and I'll be personally involved with each and every video, but you'll just be hearing a different voice talking now. Omar was actually working a lot on these videos with me behind the scenes, so I think he'll fit in really naturally and honestly his voice sounds better than me anyway. So without further ado, take it away. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Jeremy. As he just mentioned, my name is Omar and I'll become the new commentator for this channel. I'm hoping that you guys enjoy my commentary, its style and overall quality, but of course if there's anything that you guys don't enjoy or don't like or want me to improve on, let me know in the comments down below. I'm still generally new to this and sometimes I feel I talk too fast, so if that happens, I'm sorry. But overall, I hope you guys enjoy the video and I'm hoping I can bring you guys the best content possible. So in general, today we'll be looking at some cool items in RuneScape that are only available to the Jagex moderators. Lots of the community has actually spotted these items being used by the Jmods themselves during their live streams. They are particularly used to test certain features of RuneScape or are used to host fun events for the community. These items were created and programmed by Jagex because of the lack of overall client-side systems. This means almost everything manipulated and modified in RuneScape is actually done using the tools that are masked as in-game items, which is actually a pretty cool concept if you think about it. Instead of the normal programmer jumping in and coding different things to send out updates, a lot of little things are actually done using these items such as quest creation, maybe monster modification, and a lot of other things. However, without any more explanation, let's jump straight into the list itself. First up, we have an item listed as the Rotten Egg. The full purpose of this item is actually unknown. It was found, however, with various different right-click options, such as Teleports, which has the towns categorized and listed in alphabetical order. While there's no saying for sure, based on the name, it's safe to assume that this allows the Jmods to teleport to any town in RuneScape that they'd like. We also have a category on the item called Bosses, which as the name implies, lists all the various bosses in RuneScape right underneath it. It's unsure what clicking a boss name would actually do, but I'd believe that it brings up some sort of UI that allows the Jmods to spawn a boss or maybe tweak its settings such as damage, health, drop rate, etc. Other options found were a little more specific such as dungeons, minigames, and local NPC info. There's also a lot more options, but we're not going to be exploring exactly everything, but we can also see a remove NPC under me option, which further shows and proves how Jmods actually use these items to modify and create things for their game. Even quest creation or modifications are most likely done by using these in-game items themselves. Now the weirdest thing found within the Rotten Egg item is definitely two options which go by the name Fry and another named Pickle. It's beyond me what those two options would actually do, but I would love to find out as it just sounds hilarious. I mean, <laughs> fry and pickle really. As an added bonus, I'd just like to say I think the naming convention for these items are great, even the settings in general. They really just goes to show how lighthearted the development team is and the way their system is designed is very unique. Next on our list, we have the Rotten Strawberry. This item tones things down just a little with only four known right clickable properties. These properties are named Options, Lumbridge, Moss Giants, and King Black Dragon. It's definitely safe to assume that each one controls some sort of setting for the respective option name. It's possible, for example, that the Moss Giants button would control various stats for the Moss Giant creature. Not fully sure as to what it would control specifically, but things like health, damage, drop rates, spawn rates all come to mind. I'm also unsure if the Lumbridge option would teleport the Jmod to the area or instead modify some of the properties of that specific area. Nothing is super clear or confirmed, which makes this tool just a little bit more bland than the others that we have on our list. It's possible this tool was maybe made early on or instead just made to test something very specific. And real quick, I just wanted to mention that according to my YouTube analytics, over 95% of the people that watch the videos on this channel are not subscribed. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, and if you're enjoying the video so far, definitely hit that like button too. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of the video. With all that being said, following our rotten themed list, we have our next item. 
The Rotten Cabbage is this item that also has four right-clickable options, but they are a lot broader and present more possibilities. The properties list Control, Spectate, Info, and Options. It's easy to assume that Spectate allows the moderator to visually see various things such as another player, maybe an NPC or an enemy. Control and Info, however, are very broad terms and could possibly be used for just about anything. It's completely possible that Info option quite literally gives the JMON information about anything they click or view in the game. However, all we can do is speculate because there's no official information release about this item or its functionality in general. Next up we have an item with much more confirmed functionality. It goes by the name Rotten Carrot and using it on another player's account will instantly kill them and reveal the bank and inventory content. This is to hunt down and punish cheaters or exploiters who take advantage of a glitch or a hack to obtain items or gold in illegitimate ways. It's definitely great how this item was designed and implemented just for the use case of catching people who are abusing or exploiting the game. It's a great way for the moderators to find these players all while playing the game themselves. To be honest, it does sound kind of fun. I mean, imagine going around with your rotten carrot and just smacking a player and it'll kill them instantly and reveal all their bank and inventory content. I feel there's something probably very satisfying about doing that. And it kind of makes moderating sound a lot of fun. Anyways, next on our rotten item list, we have easily the most known and fleshed out item. Most of the stats and options have already been revealed to the public and its use case is very well understood. This item is known as the rotten potato. Its right click menu reveals options that go by the names eat, slice, peel, use, and mash. Each of which reveals specific features and options. For example, under the eat category, we can see options listed as set all stats, wipe inventory, set up player owned houses, teleport players, and spawn aggressive NPCs. All of these options are quite self-explanatory and do exactly what you'd expect them to. Most interesting out of all of them though is probably the ability to set up a player-owned house. When a JMON uses this option, it randomizes through all the possibilities of various houses and creates one right where they're standing. However, another interesting option under the slice category reads anti-macro event. This allows JMONs to produce a quest-like interface with a list of random events. With that, there is also under the peel category a option called AME for all as well as the blank menu which puts all nearby players inside the random event. All of these options were most likely created to test events in certain situations and areas areas, allowing JMONs to produce random scenarios on the go and even pull players into them quickly. It's like a big creative playground created for testing ideas and events. It honestly sounds awesome and super convenient for all the developers trying to create something within the world of RuneScape. However, the item options don't end there, as there's also a teleport to rare, which teleports the user to a dropped rare item on the server. Similarly, there is also spawn rare, which manually spawns a rare item below the user. The most interesting option on this item though is probably simply the use button. It has a lot of interesting characteristics depending on what you click. Different things will happen when you use the rotten potato on different things in RuneScape, which sounds a little bit weird but let me explain. Using it on the potato itself will delete the potato. Using it on a party room chest will fill the chest with one of each colored party hat. And finally, using it on the player will show the contents of their inventory. Now the reason this is so interesting is because if we think that one option can secretly do multiple things, it makes me think about all the other options we've talked about so far on the list and how they could secretly have more use cases than we originally thought. Finally, we have MASH. This category has options such as keep me logged in, kick me out, kill me, and transmorgify me, each of which is sort of self-explanatory. Kick me out was actually used when the logout button would stop working during development, or while trying new features. Keep me logged in completely disables the inactivity timer. This was probably used for JMOS to test things that would happen over a long period of time. Finally, there is the transmorgify me, which allowed the user to turn into an NPC, object, or item. I'm not too sure exactly why we would need this feature, but maybe it was used to hide and observe players. I think if a player knows that a JMOD is around, they might act or play very differently, but instead, if they can hide while still being in the game itself, it gives them a unique perspective on how players play or react to new things they're testing. Last but not least on our list, we have the Holiday Tool, which is a very special item as it's the only one on this list that was usable by more than just the JMODs. Besides being the only item without the word rotten in it, it was also at one point given to the player themselves for a very short period of time though. This item was given to certain clan leaders, live streamers, and players who focused on hosting free to play events. This item spawned free to play starter packs, it could spawn around 10 starter packs 20 times per day. I think this item is one of the coolest on 
the list only because they created something that could modify and add something into the game world, but allowed players to use it themselves. It would be amazing to see Jagex do more of this in the future. RuneScape is definitely a community driven game, and giving them the opportunity to create things, to play together as groups, or host events in some sort of way is an awesome thing that they could further explore in the future in my opinion. Anyways with all that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed my commentary today. If you enjoyed the video then hit that like button, let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to subscribe for more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.